Next up, we have Professor Georgi Buzaki, who is Professor of Neuroscience at New York University, who will speak about large-scale recording of local field and action potentials in experimental animals and human patients, right? Thank Lovely. You. Thank you. Neurons communicate with spikes. No matter what you do, if you would like to understand how a circuit functions, you have to convert all your measurements, such as calcium imaging, ball signal, to spikes. Spikes are the common currency in the brain, so we need to have, to have techniques which are capable of recording from single neurons with single spike resolution in a freely behaving animal, just like the behaviors uh, uh, Professor Andersen showed us today. Now, at this very moment, 50% of the spikes in your brain are contributed by less than 10% of the neurons. And this diligent 10% of the neurons will be the same spike that will contribute 50% of your spikes tonight. But that's only half of your brain performance. In, in order to understand the entire performance the brain is capable of doing, you have to record from the very large number of neurons that are contributing the other half. So this is one justification why we are striving, optical or electrical, to record from large number of neurons. There are various ways of doing things, one with light, the other one is electricity. Good things about electricity is that we understand how it works. We, we, we know all the theory behind that. In order to be successful, the first thing that we have to establish is an interface between the brain and, uh, and the recording device. And of course, there are multiple steps uh, between in order to record neurons, and you have to make the device small and put it on the head of the animal, it eventually read out and understand how, how neurons interact with each other. But as has been said several times in this session, it's not enough to record, not enough to get correlations. We also need a method to perturb. So we need a method that is capable of targeting a single neuron, a single spike resolution, and in the behaving animal again. So we need the, 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 the other arm of, this, uh, of, of, of this, uh, this plan. So how do we proceed? Neurons generate an electric field, from, uh, uh, which can be measured with a sensor that you put very close to the neurons. This is what is shown here, but this electrical field decreases very, very quickly with distance from the neuron. And the problem, of course, is that this neuron that you see here is surrounded by hundreds and thousands of other neurons, and we would like to hear the voices of each of them. So one way of, of doing them is triangulating their position in space. This, is, of course, is not very new. This is, has been uh, done with, with EKG. That's a, almost a 100-year technique. The difference is that the electrical field generated by each neuron is about 1,000-fold smaller than generated by the heart. And the other problem is that what if we had 1,000 or 10,000 hearts? Then how can we identify each of these separately? Well, again, the idea is that you have to record from many microphones, from many sensors, at least four. Now, the problem, of course, when you have, uh, have four sensors, that is they don't may be enough, and they may perturb the tissue. So we would like to decrease the size as much as possible and have many more sensors. So here's a, the, the, the current state of the art that it's in our hands, which can record from, as you can see, in this case, from eight sides in this larger array of electrodes from about 256 sides. And two of these can be easily put on the head of a, of a rodent. Now, the insertion technique and the recording technique, as I said, is not so simple. You can see the size that we managed to do relative to the, the brain. We have to train postdocs and, 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 and students for years to achieve the right level of surgery in order to, to target the, the, the whatever brain area you would like to use. It could be superficial cortical. It could be deep structures such as the hypothalamus. You, this is the, 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 the feeling about how clumsy these devices are despite our best efforts. So, of course, once you have this uh, effort, then you can say, oh, we can record from a free moving animals. It's pretty expensive. Uh, there is a lot of labor involved, but the results that come out from this animal is spectacular. The slight problem is the size of the headgear. So, the solution of this is to reduce the headgear as much as possible and use integrated circuits right on the substrate, such as this iMac probe that cost quite a bit of money. But here, if you see this beautiful slim st structure, which is about 70 micro only, and the entire surface, at least one side of the surface, is covered by nothing else but recording sizes. They are all very, very useful. 
and the back end is pretty small because all the active circuitry is placed in the electrode itself, so it's much lighter, much more effective than what we can do at, at the moment. There is a slight problem. The problem is that semiconductor circuits hate light. So the moment this device is hit by light, it stops functioning. Uh, and we know that we would like to have the closed loop circuit that allows us to record signal spikes and perturb signal spikes in signal neurons. So here's our solution. A manual solution, there is no solution off the shelf, so we have to make it this electrodes. We, 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 we etch fibers, these are uh, light fibers, or, or, or silicon fibers, with the most dangerous thing in the world, which is hydrofluoric acid. But we can edge them very, very sharp and manually place one by one on the surface of a silicon probe. It takes a lot of time, of course, but then you can see that at least from six chains, you can have six or eight chains, you can have six possible light sources. But even here, you can see that there is a distance between the light source and the recording sites. So in between, there are probably tens and hundreds of neurons that are not necessarily recorded, so we don't exactly know whether those neurons generate a spike that we are recording from directly or indirectly through circuits function. So you can do it a little bit better by eliminating the postdocs and students, by streamlining it, the silicon probe, so everything will be in the silicon, including uh, the, 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 the waveguard. And you can see that the blue light is coming at the end very effectively. You can split the, the light, so simultaneously one can uh, illuminate the, the, the various shanks, but of course the independence uh, is, is compromised. Uh, the other option is that you have, we can fuse the light or independently use different colors of light and channel into the same site. This is, again, a compromise. The best solution is to record from single neurons and, and perturb only those neurons that we record from at the same time. That would require light sources that are neuron size and have the, the, the weak power that is capable of activating only one or very few neurons. And this is the answer that we have. We call it a microprobe. And it is, the, the microprobe is capable of playing the music that, uh, uh, that Michael Hauser was talking about. We can play any pattern into the brain. In this particular example, there are only uh, 12 independently the, uh, operating sites, but, but they are very small, and the amount of light they, they, can, they should emit in order to uh, activate one or two or three neurons is only a nanowatt amount. So, with, with, with this, we can be very happy, but of course we have to move forward, and we would like to record from a large number of neurons and identify them one by one, and this is what we have achieved so far. But in order to get the, the, the piano even more complicated, or the music even more complicated, we need many more sites. So what we learned over the, the, the past several decades in collaboration with the, the University of Michigan Engineering Group is that light and electronics should be separated. So our solution is to put all the electronics in the back end and figure out how to reduce the light artifacts to a minimum. So now, indeed, we can record, and, and we already have recorded and demonstrated and published, single neurons uh, at a single spike resolution and record only those neurons that were activated in a free moving animal. So this is the next step. The problem with all these electrodes are that they are fragile, and they are still penetrating the brain. Neurosurgeons would be very reluctant to put it in the human brain because they may break. So we need solutions that are not so invasive, that they are non-penetrating. And our answer to this solution, to this, to this challenge, is the neurogrid. Think about a, a wrapping paper or a, 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 a uh, a cellophane paper that you use every day, which is about 10 micron. Our substrate is only four micron thick, extremely flexible, biodegradable, biodegradable, friendly, and can go into the sulci, and the, 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 it, it's also hydrophobic, so it, it sticks to the brain just like cellophane paper. What you see here is the back end of the, the electrode, and the real uh, active duty part is right here, it's shown in the high resolution here. So this can be put on the surface of the brain, as it's shown here, 
And you can see that on the surface of the brain, the, 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 the electrode is quite transparent. These are the recording sites. And then you can see the interconnect that is placed outside the, the head of the animal. Uh, this is an illustration how this is in, non-invasively put on the surface of the, the pia, and uh, the distance that you can see is about layer two, maybe a little bit of layer three. The advantage of this, that this uh, Eurogrid, is that the recording sites are neuron size, 20 micron, 20 micron, and the distance is about 30 micron, so it's, you can use the same triangulation procedure that I described to you with the, with the silicon probes. And as a result, we can record neurons from layer one, layer two, and potentially axons from elsewhere. This was the first generation that, that, that I showed you. This is our second generation, which is about uh, 360 sites. And again, you can see that uh, the, the electrode is, is quite transparent. Uh, this is a little data logger that is capable of recording for several hours, the continuously while the animal is moving around freely. So the same electrotype with a little modification can be put on the human brain. And this is an ex example that you, have, you can see during interoperative surgery of epileptic patients who are undergoing uh, surgery for, for, for beneficial effects. Uh, then we have about half an hour where we can use the recording time. And you, again, you can see the, 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 the silicon, uh, no, sorry, the, the neurogrid placed on the surface of the, the, the area. And uh, we, also from the human brain, we can record both very localized LFP as well as single spikes. The last recording that we had was actually placed on the broker area, the speech area of, uh, of, 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 a, of, a, of a patient. And speech area was never ever approached by any method because it's uh, so sensitive. So if you have seen pictures from operations in epileptic patients, this is the gruesome picture that you usually see. This, we are talking about 2016, and uh, it's, it's very sad that this diagnostic tool is so poor. It's recording all the local field potential. The spatial resolution is rather poor, although it is, uh, is, is still very useful. But there are hundreds of wires are coming out from the, uh, from the patient. The patient is bedridden, has to be sedated, and cannot move around freely. So the goal, of course, is to replace these complications with nothing else but a very thin sheet of of, uh, of Eurogrid and have the back electronics modified, have a data logger under the skin so the patient can move around freely in, in the ward for the next five to 25 days until a seizure is detected. So the answer is, or the, 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 to the challenge that we can record from freely moving animals can be both light and as I emphasize, also electricity. We need the right kind of a interface, whether we record from the surface and, uh, the, 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 and non-invasively, or if you have to penetrate the brain in order to get access to deep electrodes using uh, silicon technology. But that's only the first step that I mentioned to you. Of course, we need a, a lot of processing step there, and we view it as a, a process that has to happen in the same laboratory, and that's what we are doing. Uh, all the time, but the next two steps would be uh, two separate talks. So finally, I'd just like to acknowledge the people who uh, contributed this, and uh, I see that uh, I have to leave the, the stage. Your timing is absolutely perfect, but I'm going to invite...